So we are at the tail end of a rainstorm. A significant one for us. Looks to be an inch and a quarter. You don't get huge rainstorms around here. Not like I've heard in the south that three, four, five inches of rain is not, not uncommon. But for us, an inch or two is significant. Uh, so this is a time that I often will look at projects uh, regarding drainage. Uh, the best time to see where I need to make changes or improvements with drainage is when it's raining or when it's just done. So here's one area I finished uh, the firewood pad and processing area. It's a separate video. Um, so you can see a bit of water sheeting across it. Uh, but it has really no significant standing water puddles. That's really just running water. Um, it's about 12 inches of gravel total. Uh, 6 to 8 inches of removed topsoil. And then... Uh, four inches or so of grade above the original lawn or grade. Uh, so here what I need to do probably is uh, raise this road that goes out back a little bit. Um, most of the water, a good portion of it, goes that way and to the road ditch. But some obviously is going into my firewood area. Uh, so here's an area just that's where the field um, ends basically and just goes into the woods so you can see some of the surface water running here uh, i did build up the center of the road a bit to force the water off to the left or the right it had been channeling down the road a little bit um, you can see now that it's not happening uh, when it does rain heavily uh, i've not seen it but there's indications that there is some water that'll run down the center of it but most of it is running off to the left where I've made a little bit of a swale and that's working well on the right hand side there's also a swale that I dug out and that's uh, working as well and right now just a little bit of trickle uh, down the road you can see it here but not enough to be a problem not enough to wash anything out. This was actually one of my first uh, drainage projects when I made this uh, initial road here into the woods. Um, this area here almost always has some flow. Um, a little bit of drainage from sort of a, a swamp wet area up above. But there are no culverts here and this was sort of a natural culvert if you will uh, made of uh, larger stones uh, you can see some of the stones about that size about this size uh, underneath so all I did is I put fabric over it put gravel over it and for the most part unless we have a rainstorm it'll handle any of the water coming from upstream but I did add this culvert uh, so this little uh, area here where the water is running will only run when it's raining. Normally there's nothing running here and it'll all go underneath that road through the rocks. Uh, but I do have a 15 inch culvert that I put in here that uh, basically catches any overflow and because of the rain we had uh, since last night it's uh, receiving quite a bit of flow. <coughs> And this is uh, my main road to this uh, section of the property. So this road um, declines uh, or goes down, whatever the word is. Uh, so there can be quite a bit of flow. And when I first put this road in, uh, in the springtime, in the winter, uh, I'd have a fair amount of washout. So I dug a ditch there to the left. And uh, even though I had the ditch, um, there was a lot of washout towards the bottom of the road. So what I did here is I have three culverts that go across the road to try to disperse that. Here takes the majority of the flow. You can see there's nothing going beyond it, but if there was a lot of rain, uh, it would 
uh, use the ditch and go just beyond this culvert. That empties off into sort of a holding area, so a little bit of a pond lets at least some of the sediment fall out before it just um, surface washes uh, down and collects of that other uh, stream of water that I first mentioned that goes through the rocks. So here there's not much. If there's anything coming off uh, the hillside, it'll come into here. But here is culvert number two. It does not have much water, just a bit of a trickle uh, off here. A lot of this grown up, but so, sort of the same uh, little bit of a retention pond to let the sediment wash out or settle out. Uh, you can see a bit of, this is all just surface water from um, up there on the hill. Nothing from that initial um, ditch that we saw. So there's a bit more water running through here. And again, that goes across. Uh, you can make out this. Hopefully you can make out a little bit of the, um, the area there. It's just sort of dammed up a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure that I've ever seen this full. Um, but hopefully it would mitigate some of the sediment runoff if it did have a lot of flow. So this is where uh, the majority of the water actually crosses my road. Uh, this is a Ford. Uh, my forester actually suggested that I install a Ford here. I did have some culvert, but I did have some washout issues. Um, so the Ford just sort of sheets over the road. Uh, there's uh, riprap, uh, there's gravel, and I've not had any issue with it uh, washing out. There is also some larger rocks, so I don't have any wash issues. Uh, right now it's fairly deep. <laughs> I can get across it. Uh, and there's no issues riding across it with a tractor uh, or anything. Um, it's pretty shallow, so if there is a lot more water, it just makes a wider um, <coughs> stream in instead of a significantly deeper one. But that normally is about the maximum that I have seen, except in the springtime it may be a little bit more. This area is actually um, one of my more challenging areas, and I'm not sure that I'm completely done with it yet, although right now it looks pretty good. Uh, this I call five corners because there's five roads that meet um, But there's a lot of runoff and There was no good way to deal with it. There wasn't an easy way I could push it off to the left to the right and have it get out of the way My only option was to really drain it sort of through the intersection And then the other issue I faced was bedrock So I have an 8 inch culvert. I ended up uh, being 40 feet worth of culvert uh, to go down uh, through the intersection uh, and it's rather shallow so what I ended up doing is um, covering it with a lot of gravel and there's probably still some more gravel that I can put there it uh, makes for a bit of a hump in the middle not the best but it is what it is you can see a bit of washout right here uh, but right now there's not a lot of water running uh, but it seems to be working okay. On the outlet end, I don't really have a, a dissipator pad, but sort of making its own there, washing away the fines. Uh, you can see this is a good uh, example of uh, how the, the sediment will fall out. So I did, again, have a, a bit of a retention area. Uh, it was actually going down that way, um, causing more problems with that road. So I've stopped that, dammed this up with just some native material and now it runs off to the left here and uh, runs off there and goes directly into the uh, pond versus down my road so that's doing what I wanted it to do and so far there's no indications of any bypass or leakage it's a lot of groundwater here I too I, too, I believe there's a road up there. You can see a lot of runoff there. Um, this had received some runoff. So I dug a little bit of a swale here. You can see it's just all topsoil, woody debris. Clean that off and allowed the water to run next to the road instead of on it.
So this particular area, again, it's along a road. Uh, is a bit of a challenge. Uh, when I first put this road in, I think it was a, two years ago now, I wondered if I was going to have a problem or uh, if I was able to build it up enough with some of the soil that I was able to gather from around it so that it wouldn't be a problem, but that's not the case. It is a problem. Uh, and this will continue into next year. I'm not going to do anything this year. It'll probably freeze over enough where I can use it in the winter time. Uh, I did put a culvert in. Again, uh, same issue with the ledge. I can only go down so deep before I hit impenetrable rock. So there is water flowing into it. Uh, there might be some that flows down there. Uh, from here, I'm not sure whether it's just its own up there uh, from the other side of the slope there. <clears throat> but I'm going to have to use fabric here because it's pretty sloppy. Build it up maybe a foot or so, and I think that'll fix the problem. That's next year. But on the outlet side, and you can see there's not much of a drop off. Um, so what I will do is I think if I remove some of that debris, uh, that will that will uh, drain fairly well. But the dissipator pad for this exit of the culvert is is just pure rock. It's just flat bedrock ledge, whatever you'd like to call it. You can see uh, some of the material leaving right there. Um, so I think that's the path that I'll clean out. And if I have a chance and it's not too muddy with the excavator, I'll bring it up here uh, before winter sets in and take care of that and let that drain a bit better. I will allow, as I have the others, um, a little bit of a retention area so that the sediment will settle out before it uh, really gets to where it's going. But out this far deep in the woods, uh, this far removed from the stream that it's going to end up in, I'm not too concerned about the sediment. Here's a good look at uh, what the ledge looks like. Uh, this Most of this rock will not break up. You know, little bits and pieces of it you might be able to scrape off, but the majority of this rock is, is there to stay. Uh, I do have a little bit of water running down this road. Again, it's right on top of the bedrock for the most part. I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, no indication that it's washing anything out. So for now, I'll just leave this. In the summertime, it dries up fairly well. In the wintertime, it's frozen. Not much of an issue. You know, here what I could do is, you know, just three or four inches of material could probably force that water off into the forest floor. So this is that entry uh, that I had a video on um, earlier going to eventually be a road uh, through the field into the woods. This seems to be okay. This is an 18 inch culvert that was the size was specified by the town. Uh, but this ditch here was a little bit of a challenge just because it was hard for me to misjudge, or hard for me to judge, easy to misjudge, <laughs> uh, the slope or the depth that I needed uh, because this is um, driveways made on a slope and uh, it's just difficult to get it to make sure it ran down the side of the road and not over it, off to the right-hand side of the bank. So up here there's not a lot of runoff, it's just a little bit that um, is on this little knoll of the field. Uh, so most of this will probably just be a grass, um, a grass swale or ditch, and then as it gets a bit deeper here, I'll line it with rock. Um, this drainage seems to be working okay. Rocks on the out, out feed side are doing their job. Holding everything together.
I had a chance to clear out the discharge of this culvert. So this particular culvert was about half full on the outlet side because of the, the rock, the ledge, the bedrock there. Uh, still a lot of bedrock, but I was able to scrape away some of the topsoil, um, a junk tree and some other stumps and stuff, and able to have it drain. It'll still settle out. It's still uh, stagnant there for a bit before it'll take off down the hill. So this is a lot better. It should make uh, finishing up this road next summer quite a bit easier uh, with the water level, you know, another four to six inches lower. Still a bit of a muddy mess, but I'll fix that in the summer with some fabric and some fill of some sort, either gravel or some clay that I get elsewhere on the property. That'll finish up this video of drainage. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.